probably won't serve a lot of purpose because I only use one or two words. Um, so you won't read it while I'm talking. And, uh, but this morning we're going to talk about conversations to conversions. Um, that's our topic this morning, and it really is about how to get beyond the business card and on to business. You know what we do, we pass out our business cards, and where, where do they wind up a lot of times? In the trash. It's a horrible thing to say, but it's the truth. Um, but I'm going to show you how to really utilize those a little bit better and um, get beyond the business card and on to business. But before I start, um, I want to address what I consider the elephant in the room when you start talking about talking to other people about your business and about doing business with you. Does anybody know what that elephant in the room would be? Hmm. Take a guess, any guess. What are you trying to sell me? Okay. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost? Okay. How long does it take? Okay, good. Anything else? What's in it for me? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely what they're thinking, but what else? The elephant in the room a lot of times that keeps you from going out, making those calls, making those connections, and networking is fear. That's the elephant in the room that a lot of times we don't address, we don't pay attention to, and it doesn't allow us to move forward and get beyond the hello, the pleasantries, the how are you's, into really finding out if you can or will do business with this person or even refer them to someone else or refer someone else to them. So that's kind of what we're covering this morning. But I wanted to talk about the fear because sometimes that plays a real huge part in why we're not getting the sales and the conversions. Um, what I say about the fear, recognize that it's there, feel it, do it. Do it afraid, but just do it. Because if you don't do it, you're not going to make any money. And the reality is you're in business because, yes, you love it. You're passionate about it. You love what you do. But at the end of the day, Tico does not want to hear your passion about your business. They want you to pay your bill. That's the reality. So, so we're going to... Uh, this is kind of like the, okay, it didn't look this pink when I did it on my computer. <laughs> but it works, it works, it works. <laughs> so this is kind of like the formula that uh, we're gonna walk through today. And the formula is kind of going from those contacts, you know, having those conversations, making the connection, developing that relationship and that rapport, then converting that to a sale. You know, how you can, and, Sometimes when we think of converting to a sale, we're thinking we have to convert that one person to get that one transaction. But we're going to talk a little bit later, you know, a few minutes uh, down the road about what we're really talking about when we're talking about relationships and going into conversions. So, okay, number one, if you refer to your handout, you'll see the bullet points there. And our first bullet point is um, ideal client characteristics. You need to know what your ideal client or customer looks like. I mean, what they really look like. A lot of times you hear people say, you'll hear people ask the question, who's your customer? Everybody's like, everybody's my customer. No, they're not. You have a particular person that is fit tailored just for you and your business. And you have to do the legwork, the homework, the research, and figure out who that is. What does that mean? That means the demographics. What age are you trying to reach? Your gender, their gender, not your gender, their gender. <laughs> um, the industry, you know, what industry do they work in? What's their income level? Why is income level important? Because you want them to be able to pay you. That's the reality. Their education level, where are they located? You know, all of those different things go into the demographic. What are their goals? What are their goals? Your ideal client, they have goals. They have business goals, they have personal goals. You might wanna know where are they going? How are they planning to get there? 
because you want to really know if they're a good fit for you or if you can refer them to someone else, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. And we're going to talk about just a little bit, I'm going to touch on about being desperate for sales. Um, know their problems, know their pain points. Pain points are huge because if you have the solution to their pain points, they are willing to pay. People do it all the time. People give up loads and loads of money because they have a pain that needs a solution. And boy, if you have the solution, you can make the dollars. But you have to know what their pain is. You know, I mean, if I'm in pain in my foot, why am I gonna go to the head doctor? You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of the same thing. So that's, that's kind of like a quick thing on your ideal client characteristics. You can really drill it down and really, really figure out what that person looks like. Because otherwise, if you don't really know that, you are wasting your time because you're going from person to person to person to person. And no, you're never going to really make those transactional, transaction relationships because they're not the people you need to be targeting. So that's just a little bit about that. The next thing is about new contacts, new connections. How do you meet these new contacts? How do you make these new connections that we're gonna convert into sales? How do we even find them? Go out and meet new people. I mean, it's pretty, it's really not that difficult. Uh, go out and meet new people. I'll, I always say, I heard somebody say this, you can't grow your business from the house, from your office from the desk, from the chair, from the sofa. From, you can't grow your business. You have to really get out, make connections, meet people. Where do I go? You go to associations. Become a member of associations. Networking events. I mean, you guys, obviously you know about networking events. Uh, conferences, seminars, special events, community events, neighborhood businesses. A lot of times we overlook the businesses that are a one mile radius from our house. Go right around. Identify some businesses that maybe you can talk to, get to know, you never know what could come out of it. You know, um, Mary, you know, you do business writing and you do your editing and things like that. You never know, they might really need that. And they're like down the street from your house. You know? Right. <laughs> You know, you just never know. But you won't know if you don't go out into the neighborhood and do what I call the one mile check. Check it out. You never know. Learn where your tribe hangs out. Anybody know what I mean when I say tribe? There's a, a marketing guy, Seth Godin. Seth Godin refers to those that follow you as your tribe. They're the people that will sing your praises, they will market for you, they will, do, they will do word of mouth, they will say all the great and wonderful things about you. So when I talk about tribe and mention tribe, that's what I'm making reference to. Find out where they hang out, online and offline. Online and offline. You want to make sure you're getting good traction both ways. So, social networks. You can go to, of course, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, there's, there's a whole bunch, you know, but those, of course, are the three primary ones, but there are a whole bunch of them. How do I use, utilize Facebook? I make connections, of course, and I look at them and go, they look like they'll be a good person to connect with. So what I do is I send them a message and I say, wow, thank you for connecting with me. Or I'm so glad we connected. I'd like to learn more about you. I haven't said anything about my business. I haven't said anything about what I do. I haven't said anything even about their business. I said, I wanna learn more about you. So how would you like to schedule 30 minutes for us to chat and get to know one another? It works wonderfully. People love it. Jessica in the back, we did that. 
we moved from the 30 from a, having a phone conversation i went out to her bridal shop i sat with her we had a great time now when i come to working with them tampa bay events and i see jessica I'm like, jessica yes you know you have that relationship and that rapport you built but that's my i try to do that three times a week I roll that into my, you know, making connections and new contact uh, part of my my day, which you should be planning that on your schedule. Okay, so begin with the end. Begin with the end. Anybody know where I got that from? Covey Stephen. Yes, ma'am. Stephen Covey. Seven habits of highly effective people. Begin with the end in mind. I refer to it as having vision for what you're doing. How does that apply to what we're talking about today? Well, you have to create the experience that you want to have when it comes to having these conversations, making these connections, and getting these conversions. You kind of have to walk through it in your mind and see what it looks like. It's not enough just to make the contact, you know, build a relationship. You just kind of in your mind, just really walk that thing out and see what it really, really looks like. Walk through it step by step. Have a system, a proven system that works. There are many of them out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are many systems that work that will take you from you know that conversation all the way down to getting that conversion. Have a system. What does your system include? It includes what you do. It includes where you do it, how you do it, when you do it, who you do it with. Once that system is working for you, you do what? You rinse it, you repeat it. Over and over and over. You rinse it and repeat it. Over and over and over. Because if it's working for you, you're just gonna keep, you just keep using it. You keep using it. So, <clears throat> the next thing is, talk about smooth transitions. Smooth transitions. What do I mean when I talk about smooth transitions? I'm talking about during the course of a conversation, you meet somebody new, and you know, they're, you're, you're kind of talking, you get to the pleasantries, and okay, how do I move this conversation forward? Uh, what do I say next? What do I do? You know, so, but make it a natural conversation, make it a natural progression. So, how do you do it? They're telling you about their their business or their children or their family. You know, you just dig a little more deeper. You know, tell me more about that. Tell me more. Um, <clears throat> what's the number one? What's the, the the number one skill during these smooth transitions would be what? Listening. Listen. Absolutely. And when you're listening, you're actively listening because you're listening for certain things to help you with these transition points so you can dig a little deeper and um, do what I call a uh, intel gathering. There's a lot of times that's what you're doing. If you're purposed and targeted in what you're doing, and you're really trying to get that conversion, you're really listening to what the person talk about because you're never gonna know if what you have is what they need if you're not listening to them and listening actively because listening actively encourages more information, it helps you build a rapport, and you start to build confidence and trust. Now, a good way to do that is to use something called form. It's to get them to talk about their family, their occupation, their recreation, and their message. Their message being the thing things that are important to them. It could still be family, it could be occupation, it could be recreation, it could be charities, it could be roller skating, it could be, and the list goes on. So that's a good thing to follow, you know, when you're having the conversation um, with people, new people that you're talking to. And again, you can use those transition statements. Could you explain? Tell me more. How long have you been in the widget business? How long have you been selling dresses? How long have you been editing? How long have you been doing graphic design? How long have you been planning events? You know, how long? People 
people like to talk about themselves. They just do. And you're giving them an opportunity to do that. Because when you're in these conversations, don't make it about you, make it about them. What's the R? Recreation. Mm -hmm. Recreation. Make a pact. What is, what is a pact? The pact is <clears throat> that you're going to make with yourself when you're having these conversations is you're going to be polite, you're going to be authentic, you're going to be competent, and you're going to be a trusted advisor. That's the pact you, you would want to make with yourself. Okay, polite. Polite is pretty much what it is. Polite. In today's normal, today's normal is Blackberries, iPhones, Evos, any smartphone, text messaging, face, Facebooking, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, tweeting. Those are all distractions. I was, um, I was somewhere, I was looking at something, I can't remember what it was. And they said, now the attention span of the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hear the chuckles, the attention span of the average person now today is 1.7 seconds. 1.7 seconds. Talk about grace under fire. You have 1.7 seconds to get their attention before they start doing what? Looking at their watch, pulling out their phone. We do it. It's almost become a part of us. So when I talk about being polite, I'm saying, don't pull out the iPhone, don't pull out your smartphone and get distracted because now you've disengaged yourself from the conversation. People see that and they notice it. Um, so that's have kind eye contact with them. Have a pleasant demeanor. Smile, you know. Make it a good exchange and experience for them. That way they're wanna stay maybe connected and keep talking. You know, and then you can get beyond them, them just handing your business card and everybody's like, oh, okay, all right, I'll talk to you later, you know, and you never ever do anything beyond that. Um, authentic. Authentic is just genuine interest in helping. Genuine interest in helping will take you further than a single transaction. Gen gen <clears throat> excuse me, genuine interest in helping could get you not only this person that will buy from you over and over again, but they're going to tell people in their sphere of influence. And we're going to talk about sphere of influence briefly. Be confident. Remember earlier I said we're going to talk about being desperate? Don't come off desperate. Don't nobody work for, want to work with nobody that's desperate. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't. Don't come off desperate. Even if you are. Fake it. <laughs> you know, I always hear the term, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. Don't come off desperate. Come off confident, assured, authentic, you know, and it's like, hey, I got it going on. All right? So, so that's what I mean when I say be confident and don't come off desperate. But believe in your product. Stand in front of it, not behind it. You're the face of it. Be confident about it. Be assured about it. Know that what you offer is the greatest thing to slice bread. Come off that way. I'm not saying be cocky. I'm saying be confident because people can sense, you know, the cocky thing. You know, they go, ah, you know, I don't want to work with you. So um, be a trusted advisor. That's the T. Be a trusted advisor. What do I mean when I say that? What I mean is don't peddle your wares. Don't peddle your skill. Don't peddle your services. You know, don't be like, you know, I don't know if, you, you know, if you've been in New York City and you get to a certain place and they got the briefcases and they're like, come on, don't you want to buy these? Don't you want to buy this watch? Don't you want to, I got a watch here, I got a necklace here, don't you want to buy it? And what do you do? Uh, thank you. You're like, oh, okay, I don't want to deal with them. Yeah. Don't devalue yourself or your business by doing that. Because that's what it does. It devalues what you offer. It devalues you as a person, as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur. 
Don't peddle your wares. Become a trusted advisor. Position yourself as a trusted advisor. It'll elevate your image in the marketplace. <clears throat> beauty of connections. The beauty of connections. What does all this mean? Boy, I have skated on top of all everything, but what does this mean? This means get beyond that single transaction mentality and experience the exponential power of connections. What does that mean? <clears throat> that means build rapport and relationships. Why? Because it gives you access to the network of people associated with every connection you make. Go in just trying to get that one sale, bet that's what you're gonna get. But if you go in with a rapport building mindset, you not only get, you know, I not only get Rhonda, but I get her whole Verizon network along with it. You know, it's like, you, you see the Verizon commercial, <laughs> you know, the guy's standing there and he has like 200 people standing behind him. That's what you get. Just real quick, has anyone heard of the law of the 250? Uh, 251. Is that where water boils? No, that's oh. no. Oh. The law of 250. That's good though. <laughs> <laughs> that's all usable information. <laughs> Real quick before I close, Joe Girard, he was a car salesman. He is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's greatest carsman to this day. He sold 13,001 cars over 15 years at one dealership. He wrote a book called How to Sell Anything to Anybody, and this is what he says about the Law of 250. He says, everyone has on average 250 people in their sphere of influence, people that they know. Think about it. Each one of you, 200, you bring at least 250 people with you. Why would I not want to connect with you, establish a relationship, learn what you really need, find out where your pain points are, help you there, work with you, and have you go tell 250 people the great job I did. That's the power of connecting. So as I close, and of course you don't have to do this now, but as I close, I would like, before you leave today, somebody next to you, behind you, near you, schedule a 30-minute chat. You'll be surprised, not only what you find out, but the connection you can make, and how you can go from them just being your contact to having them as a business partner, you can be their trusted advisor, they can be yours, and down the road, you can be doing millions and millions of dollars of business together. <laughs> so before you leave today, that would be great. At the bottom of the worksheet, uh, the handout, uh, there is a QR code. Get yourself a QR reader and scan it. That's a special page there for the Working Women of Tampa Bay. My thank you to you.